Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Paul's Workshop. Today's video is all about inlays, and it's inlays with the resin. Now this is using a stone coat epoxy, and I'm using this Starbond uh, Bica Powders. This is the Cobalt Blue, mixed with just a touch of black, both from the Starbond company. And combined with the stone coat countertop epoxy, I think this turned out absolutely gorgeous. I want to show you exactly how I made this today. It's really not that difficult. In the introduction, I showed the inlay without the top coat to be able to avoid all of the glare. This is the finished product with the top coat and those colors really pop. I'm breaking all of the traditional rules with this project. This is going to be made with a half inch piece of plywood. That's right, plywood. I'm also not using a roundover. I'm using a 45 degree bit and quite frankly the bit was set just a little bit high so it creates a different profile. Again, not your typical um, type of profile. Usually people will use a quarter inch or a half inch roundover bit. Well, this is not the case. I'm using a 45 degree bit for this and that is going to make it more challenging to be able to get the resin to be able to cover this edge. But again, this is not a traditional project, and I want to show you that you're not limited just by the traditional stuff that people do. Here's a close-up view of that profile. You can see the 45-degree bit, and you can see how that creates a sharp, sharp edge. At this point, it's time to put a primer on. The primer that I'm using is the Stone Coat Epoxy Undercoat. And this is the white because I want a white background for this project. And I'm putting two coats of this epoxy undercoat on there. I'm also going to paint both sides at the same time. Using the little standoff on the workbench makes it where I can paint the back side right now. I'll flip it over and then I'll paint the front side. And that actually saves a step. Now later on at the very end of the project, I'll come back and paint another coat on the back side just to be able to finish it up. And who knows, I may put a clear coat on the back side also. The paint's all dry. I put the frog tape around the perimeter and actually that wasn't completely necessary. But I wanted to make sure I had good control of the epoxy on the surface. So that's the reason for the tape. The white color that I'm using is actually from the Stone Coat Countertop People. And I only take just a couple of drops. It does not take much at all. A little bit goes a long ways. Now this whole process does not need to be rushed. You have about 45 minutes worth of working time with this epoxy, so take your time. Now that I've added the color to it, I'm gonna thoroughly mix this epoxy for at least two minutes to make sure that it's completely thoroughly mixed and making sure that you scrape the sides of this container. You want everything completely thoroughly mixed before putting it onto your project. Now it's time for the fun part. I want to be able to pour this resin across the entire surface of this project. There's no real special way to do it. I just want to be able to pour it out and get it out onto the surface. So I'm going to go around the outside first and then I'll come in to the middle. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You also want to scrape the container and make sure that you get all of this epoxy out. Because this project is so small, I'm not using a big trial. I am, however, using a putty knife that does have the eighth inch notches in it. This allows me to be able to spread the epoxy evenly throughout the entire surface. This also allows me the opportunity to bring the epoxy right up to the edge of the tape so that when I remove the tape, I'll be able to work the edges and have the epoxy flow over the surface onto the edge of this material. I'm also using the torch to be able to pop the bubbles that are forming on the surface. It's time to remove the tape. I want this epoxy to be able to flow over the edge and completely coat the edge of this uh, profile on this material. Now remember, this is not the normal profile. This is not a typical roundover. So it's going to need a little bit of help to be able to get that epoxy to flow. The surface tension is rather significant and it does not want to just flow over the edge on its own. So this is where you're going to have to get your hands involved and be able to help cover the edge of this profile. 
I have plenty of epoxy on the surface, so it's not a problem being able to grab that material and drag it over the edge and be able to completely coat it. Don't worry about damaging it or making a problem. This is self-leveling and we're going to be able to have a perfectly smooth glass-like finish in the end. The edges are all done and it's time to torch this surface one more time to be able to remove the different bubbles. This needs to be done at least two times, maybe three, depending on the situation. If you don't have a torch, no problem. You can use a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, use a hair dryer. All three will work just fine. If you look close, you're going to see just a little bit of waves in the surface. That's okay. Again, this is self-leveling and all of this is going to smooth out completely smooth and be just like a piece of glass. I'll let this set up overnight so that it'll be completely dry and tomorrow we'll be ready to be able to carve the logo into this material. Well, it's the next morning and I had a visitor that decided to take a close look of the epoxy also. This logo came off of the school website. I was able to take it into the VCAR Pro and be able to create the necessary tool paths. I'm using the Fox Alien Vasco CNC router to be able to carve this. I'm also using the Open Build controller, which is a free software that will actually control the CNC machine. I used an eighth inch upcut bit to be able to do the roughing pass. And actually, I should have used an eighth inch or a quarter inch down cut bit. It would have done much better. I also used a 60 degree V bit for the detail of finishing pass. Now the exciting part. It's time to be able to mix the colors and get this poured. One additional step I could have done and didn't is seal this plywood. This is just a raw wood and we're going to see how it does. Normally I would use a thin coat of epoxy or a thin coat of just regular wood sealer. But let's see how this does just with the epoxy and the untreated wood. The mica powder that I'm using is the Starbond Cobalt Blue. Not sure if you can see that real well in the camera, but it is a gorgeous, beautiful color. Now this kit by Starbond contains 24 different colors, and I chose the Cobalt Blue to be able to use this. It also comes with these little spoons, and it takes a very, very small amount to be able to create this color. Now I also chose to add just a little bit of black in with this to make it a little bit darker. This black is also a Starbond mica powder, and I'll put links in the description below so you can go to their website and take a closer look at their amazing products. It's time now to take this epoxy and pour it into the different cavities. I want to be able to pour most of this epoxy into the large areas, and then I can work it into the smaller areas by just pouring a very small stream of epoxy or working it into these very close locations with a toothpick. If you accidentally pour some of this epoxy onto the white, no big deal. It's not going to cause a problem. But here I'm using a popsicle stick to be able to spread it into these corners, into the edges, and I'll add more epoxy to be able to make sure that everything is completely covered and full to the very top. If possible, I want this to be able to overfill just a little bit. You can see how I can use the popsicle stick to drag this epoxy right up to that very pointed edge of the logo. I'll continue to add more epoxy as I move this around until this cavity is completely full. For the very small and these pointed areas, I'll use a toothpick to actually drag the epoxy down and fill these very, very sharp pointed areas to make sure that the epoxy is completely covered right down to the very finest tip of the logo itself. Also, I'm using a toothpick to pull that epoxy through the whiskers and be able to fill this cavity. This is a very small area, and quite frankly, the popsicle stick can't even get into this space. So after a little patience and a few minutes of time, I was able to get all of the epoxy in there, and this color is gorgeous. I'm taking the torch now and popping some of the bubbles and getting those out. Again, this is going to need to be done at least a couple of different times to get all the bubbles. And this is where one of the problems with dealing with plywood. Plywood has a tendency to be able to trap the air and 
that air can eventually come up through the epoxy. The other nice effect that I was able to accomplish using the Starbond uh, black and the cobalt blue is to take a toothpick and do some little swirls into this and it turned out gorgeous. It's the next morning and I went through and sanded this starting at 120 grit and went all the way up to 320 grit and it looks just beautiful right now but it's time to put that top coat on and after mixing it for at least two minutes it's time to pour it on and make this sign go from fantastic to absolutely gorgeous. This top coat makes it shine like a piece of glass and this cobalt blue is just gorgeous. I want to be able to pour all of this epoxy out. I'm going to completely scrape every single drop that I can get out of this container and then I'm just going to spread it around just like I did before. Now you also notice I do not have the tape on the edges this time. I found that that just wasn't necessary. I'm using the same putty knife with those eighth inch notches in it to be able to get all of this material spread around evenly over the entire surface and I'm dragging this epoxy right up to the edge. And then it's time to get the hands involved. Don't have to worry about messing up the surface. I'm making sure and dragging all of the epoxy over the edge. Make sure that you get a good coat of the epoxy all along the surface of the edge and you can even rub this epoxy around on the surface. It's not going to hurt anything at all. You just want to make sure that you have good coverage and by using your hand in this manner it makes it where there is no marks left from the putty knife that you were spreading it around. Remember this is self-leveling so it's going to smooth out to be a perfectly flat surface. So take your time with this. Make sure you have good coverage. Make sure that you've got it as smooth as you can. Don't worry about spreading it out and doing a little bit of swirls with your hands onto the surface. It's not going to hurt a thing. Once this is all done and you're satisfied that you have good complete coverage, it is time to grab that torch and let's get the bubbles out. If you look real close, you can see the bubbles popping as I take the torch and move over the surface. I want to give you a real good close-up now of this being finished. Look how this shines and look how that cobalt blue with that touch of black in it just really shines and is just gorgeous. I don't think this could turn out any better at all. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think in the comment section below on how you think this turned out. But I am very thoroughly, completely happy with the results of this project. I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. I hope you were able to learn something about using the epoxies and doing the different inlays. The mica powders from Starbond are absolutely fantastic. And I love working with the stone coat countertop epoxies. They are an amazing product and they give you plenty of working time to be able to work with your project. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button down below and the bell notification so that you'll be notified on the different videos. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the upcoming videos. So I can't wait to see you in the shop again real soon. So bye-bye.